G'day folks, welcome back to Measure Twice, Cut Once, the show delivering you the goods every week. Uh, as far as some interesting content that uh, is both extracted from the comments in the sections that uh, you leave to us and also things that uh, my partner in crime and I sort of rattle our brains with and we, we come up with a topic and, and hopefully that's uh, interesting enough for you to be part of the show. Uh, if, you, if you're first time here, please subscribe to the uh, YouTube channel and perhaps uh, go over to uh, all the different podcasting streams to uh, be part of that. So, I am here by myself in Chris's shed because he doesn't know that. I don't know if he does, but <laughs> just kidding. What the hell are you doing, are you? Oh, mate, yeah, no, that's, uh, I was going to take a, a look at the fixing that thing they got over there before you got home. I, I'm, that's the kind of person I want to see the back of your car before you leave today. No please. worries, mate, she's locked. Yeah. Key's broken. <laughs> I got my, my saws all, my demo saw. Yeah. I can open your car, not a problem. That's all right, I took the batteries away. Oh. <laughs> no, this, this is a... Uh, my uh, good friend, the uh, man who's an aeronautical engineer, and he can be spotted on weekends flying over the cliffs of Ocean Grove, uh, Chris Zubek. How are you, Chris? You missed those introductions, haven't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us again for this week. Yeah. Flying. How do you get these things? Do you lie awake at night thinking of an intro for me? No, no, just on the spur of the moment. Spontaneous combustion in my brain. I wish you would spontaneously combust. <laughs> um, we'd like to also make mention of our partner. We have a, a new thing going here on the channel. Uh, we have a partnership thing. It's not a sponsorship, but it's a partnership. And that's with Nathan from Hamaru. Who, um, he has some great products, Chris. Oh, he does? Some, yeah. Without a doubt. Finishes for timber finishes and also um, I think they're diamonds, you know, the, the, the colouring for mm. um, epoxy type thing. Yes, and yes. He supported us in our giveaway last year. So we we partnered up with Nathan to help support him. And, you know, it's a we all reciprocate the love. So yes, think. yes, we do. And, and he's you, very helpful. If you've got a question about anything of those things, just yeah. give him a call or drop him a line. Yep. Um, I should put a little down the bottom here, his uh, email address or something. Should, should, yeah. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, yeah, I never thought of that. Any other partners, uh, potential partners out there, if you'd like to be also doing the same thing with us, uh, we give back to the community. We, we're not here to, you know, gain anything personally. <laughs> he might be. If, if you want to be part of this, <laughs> just drop us a line. <laughs> So last week, Chris, uh, social media, we had a bit of a chat about that. Yeah. Our personal take on it. Yep. Um, pretty good, you know, it's always good to thrash out a few things, a few pointers. Um, what, did you gain anything out of that chat? Uh, yeah, it's, um, you know, like we, we, we talked about, uh, you know, the people that were, that were in it, you know, whether they're part of community. And I know, I know you and I are both, you know, really pro-community. We want to build it up. Um, and then I just, I, actually after the episode, I jumped on the computer and checked out all the other, um, you know, like, like Reddit and, um, and all those to oh, see yeah. whether I could maybe get mm. into that and, and build my channel a bit quicker. Maybe. Yeah. Yep. So. Food for thought. It is. Yeah. Don't say food. I'm starving. Oh yeah? Yeah. yeah. My, my stomach's rumbling a bit too. You said you weren't hungry. I know. I'm on a new diet. It's called Don't Eat. You lose weight. Um, <laughs> I'm on a seafood diet. Yeah, I know. That's a, <laughs> the old joke. Uh, what have you been up, up to personally? Personally? Making stuff? I have. Um, I've been making this uh, bedhead for a customer that's taken longer than the, yeah. the, the, the roads into Rome. I don't know how he sleeps at night. Wait, no. on the, everyone at work tells me he sleeps on the floor. <laughs> but it's nearly finished. Good. Um, and I've got myself recently a new toy. A new yeah. toy? A new toy, yeah. Is it blue? <laughs> it could be. <laughs> is, it a, is it Craig? No, it's not a Craig thing. Oh. Um, it's a new uh, CNC machine. I've got myself a CNC machine. Oh, you must show and tell one day. I will. There's going to be a video coming out on my channel yep. about it. Um, it's been... I've had a lot of fun just playing with it. It's It's... Amazing what you can actually do with these things. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I see it set up, Chris, and I, you know it's like I probably one day will go down that avenue. But um, 
as far as me, your workshop's getting there. Um, slowly. Slowly, but surely, and surely is what we want. I've been making some stuff for uh, uh, wine-related products in the shed and, uh, you know, uh, anything else that people might want. So, and, and challenge video, that was a recent one I was... I know, I know, I... Um... I couldn't be a part of it. I just didn't have the time. My physics, yeah. Vic, I'm really sorry. Um, I, I just physically didn't have the time yeah. to do it. So, but stay tuned. More coming, Chris. Is, I know. Yep, yeah, and, and and I will most definitely be a part of the next one. And we we hope everyone else who makes videos will be part of that as yes, well. Yes, so for sure. Getting on today's subject, what are we talking about today? Well, you know, we're just talking about me getting this slowly, slowly in order. Yep. It's for a reason. Yep. Because. I'm going to be retiring soon. Oh, no, really? So I'll have more time yep. to give you the, sh um, the time pips, of day. Pips yeah. out of your grapes. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, life life after retirement, Dirk. Yeah. yeah. Or life before retirement and how you're going to tactically look at how you can make your retirement uh, the best it can be. Mm. So we'll let's, talk about that. Let's get into it. Right on. Yeah, uh, we, we thought it'd be a really good idea, mate, to uh, come up with a, a subject which I don't think I've heard many people tackle, and um, that, that is to do with retirement when you retire from your working life. Um, you know, a lot of people work, I don't know, 40 years, work a lot longer, but um, we're all different, and we're all different stages of life. Um, a few of those considerations, Chris, are uh, your pre-retirement, right? Mm. So your planning. Um, and that, that, that takes in consideration, are you financially well off enough to be able to retire? Yep. Have you got uh, your hobby? Have you got a hobby? Have you got something that will maintain your you know, the creativity uh, and physical play into the future? Because, as we know, we, we start a hobby, and it gets in your blood. Oh, it does. And, and it's, a, it's a very, very strong, uh, sort of like a liqueur, uh, what do you call it? Um, elixir. 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 And, you know, <laughs> and, and I, I think, like, I personally, and I know you probably do, uh, really hanging for the day, but we're not trying to uh, wish our lives away either. We're hanging for the day where we can be autonomously supported and not need to wake up and go to work. I actually Does that sound good? I, I actually have a countdown timer. <laughs> countdown to the, timer. To the day I retire, dude. That's that's quite that's a that's that's beautiful to hear that because um, you know, some people will not have any plans to when the day comes. That's, that's exactly what you you just said, you know, pre retirement. Pre-retirement plans. That's uh, basically what I'm doing now. Yeah. Right. I'm setting myself up. I've got you know, a little under three years to go before I retire, so I'm setting myself up for retirement. Yeah. And what that means for me, in particular, is getting my workshop set up the way I wanted to get set up, uh, making sure that I've got all the tools that I need. Yeah. To to continue doing my my hobby, which is woodworking. Yeah. Um, and then maybe working out a way. Because the one thing that we're, that I'm going to miss during retirement is the regular income. Yes, of course. You've got a weekly income, that's that's going to stop. Yep. Unless I can work out a way to get my boss to pay me after I retire. Yeah. All right? And when I work that out, I'll let everybody else know. Yeah. Um, so you've got to work out because um, we've got superannuation, um, we've got our pensions to look forward to, but both those combined might not be enough yep. to keep you going. Yep. All right? So I'm working out a way to maybe make a little bit of extra coin mm. on the side, you know, like uh, selling some of my pens or um, making new things. I've got the CNC machine, as you know, now. Um, just working towards that goal. Yeah. You know, and I think that's uh, maybe maybe a lot of people don't sort of think that far ahead. But um, for me, I think three years isn't that long. Yeah. Um, because the last 40 that I've been working went like that. Well, so... True, true. And, you know, we're, we're, all, we're all subject to the time we have on this uh, earth and, you know, the things that go on in that uh, period. But, like, the pre-planning stages are... <clears throat> some people might say, 
I'm going to start a hobby when I retire, and that's great. But you're then starting to learn when you have the most time on, you know, on hand. Yep. Um, then there's the other uh, fact, the, the other people out there who've been doing it maybe lifelong hobbies, mm. and how do they approach that, Chris? Is it, is it something that like you've been doing it a long time, not full time, but can you can you make the uh, the jump across to having the extra time when you've only actually in your work life had part time, you know, a little bit of uh, time on the weekend after work? Can you transition into becoming <laughs> practically a full time hobbyist maker? Yeah. Can you do it? Do you think or or, or once you retire, you've decided you've had enough of, in our case, we've had enough of woodworking, we're going to do something totally different. Yeah, yeah. Why would you do that, I don't know, but, you know, some people may look that way. Yeah, you know? yep. I, I don't know what else I would do in my uh, retirement years. It's just, this is what I've been sort of working <laughs> up to, so... Yeah, and, and as you mentioned, pre-prepping your workshop, you know, obviously we, we... Some people like to have more machines, some are happy with the basic essentials, you know, and they're, they're things, well, budgeting. If I haven't bought the things and up until the time when I retire, I'm going to have to go bang all of a sudden, you know. There's my retirement, my superannuation going on the workshop. Yeah, big chunk gone, yeah. Yeah, so a lot of people have already set themselves up, in my opinion, who, who get into a hobby, whether you're welding, sheet metal, you know, whatever. Needle point, yep, painting. yep. yep. That's right. All those things. That's right. Um, I reckon. I reckon I'm just about done with setting up myself, tools wise. Yeah. Um, I don't think I need anything. The only thing I need is a big workshop. That's all I need. Well, yeah, that's right. But then you start again. You go. Well, I've got this extra space. What can I put in here? I can get the bigger thing. You know. True. That's yeah. That's all part of the fun. On it is uh, pre-planning for for the time when you do retire from uh, the workforce. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Things to look forward to, Chris. So, hang on, but the, does that lead into the mental approach? Well, I can. For retirement. It can. That, right. That's a big factor. It is a big factor. I think that's the biggest one. Yeah. Personally. Yeah. Yeah. Because you've been doing, you've been working for however many years, mm -hmm. 40 years, 50 years, and all of a sudden that stops. You don't have to get up in the morning anymore, which is <laughs> great, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, but you, you're leaving behind... Um, a whole group of friends. Yes, potentially. Potentially, you know, there's a lot of people that you won't see ever again, you yeah. know, because you're retired, you're moving on, they move on. Yeah. You know, so you've got to prepare yourself for that. So you've got to make yourself a whole new group of friends. Yep. If, if that's the way you want to do it. That's yeah. right. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that mental approach, and uh, one of the episodes we had uh, last season was um, mental health. Exactly. That's got to be a big part of this. 100%. You know, you've got to... You've got to look after your own well-being because if you retire, like for in, for in my case, I'm retiring at 60 and I've got another, let's hope, 10, 15 years to play with. Yep. But, you know, I'm mentally I'm, I'm thinking, oh, what's the point of it all? Mm. Yeah. You know, so I, I think that's another big thing that you've got to take into consideration. Yeah. And, yeah, and, and it's, I think it's proven people who have a, a very positive mental approach because they're actually doing the hobby and as we discussed last year on that episode, mm. those people, a lot of people have come to us and said, we do have issues and, you know, and, and it's through uh, the joys of uh, creativity that we overcome barriers. Mm. <clears throat> so one of those barriers, you know, like, um, is that you have this influx of time on your hands. Now, are you, are you ready to then say, I'm going to commit most of my time to doing my hobby? Yep. Or am I going to have a good life balance mix of, say, I like to travel, so I'm going to travel? Yep. But with that, it, you know, we can set up something. If you travel for a quite a time period, you can put tools in the back of your whatever you've got, you know, and occasionally you might pull up and you, you feel you're lacking that creative space. You're still able to do your hobby, you know, battery-operated saws. and You know what, that's, that's opened up a whole new thing. Yeah. In, in my head, it's opened up a whole new thing. I, I've got a little lathe. Yep. I can throw that in the back of the van. I can drive to wherever I want to go, yep. uh, whatever markets I'm at, and yep. just turn pens on the go. Exactly. That's a good idea. Or I can throw, I mean, my, my CNC machine isn't that big. Yeah. I can throw that in the back of the van. Yeah. 
If I was to throw everything in the back of the van, I'd need to buy a truck. Yeah. But um, that's, that's actually not a bad idea. And we, we sort of interlinking uh, the conversation from that show last year about do I specifically work at, in, from a workshop or do I have the ability to take some equipment and be portable to mm. make things, you know? So, yeah, um, yeah that's we're delving into a different uh, yes, mine are. shaft there. But, you know, all, all interesting points about uh, the potential... Uh, victories you can have in a retired life. Um, you know, it's, we quite often hear the stories, people retire, three years later, hasta la vista. And, mm. you know, that's sad. It is so sad when, you know, uh, you, if you keep that thing ticking on in, in you got upstairs. It. You got it. Yep. My, my dad um, retired at, uh, at, I was going to say 25. My dad retired at 55, yeah. uh, worked at, um, at Ford yeah. for most of his time. And lived to the ripe old age of 80. Yes. And I thought, what a great innings that is. 25 years to yep. do what you want. Yeah? Yep, yep. And, um, and his main job was to give me the shits. And he did that really well. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong, I love my dad and I miss him terribly. But he had, the point I'm trying to make is he had 25 years. Yeah. I would, I'd, I'd love something like that. You yeah. know, finish work at 60 and then live to 85 and just do what you want to do. Yeah. And it's a, it's a little bit like people who travel, they meet groups of people like-minded. Uh, people who say, like doing woodworking, they find like-minded people. You know, and, and that's, that's I, I suppose, something we search for, but uh, uh, the search comes to us at times as well. So, you know, and I, I don't think if you have a hobby or a craft, you can ever be bored or not have friends. Because it's just you've got more time to have those friends and you, you invite them over and you, you know, you can travel and have a meet up with people we met know in Sydney and Queensland, mm. you know, and they're, they're the things that are potentially to look forward to, you yes. know. So it's, it's a good mental space, that, uh, that whole prospect of, you know. Yeah. So that, that, that touches on what we wanted to talk about, what you always look forward to mm. during your retirement. Yeah. 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 Uh, for me, there's one or two people I'd love to meet in. Um, in Sydney, yep. One of them knows who she is. Um, the other one, not so much. Yeah. Because he's always got these stakes that he's putting on. Sh on oh yeah. You know, it's just driving yeah. me nuts. I'm yeah. trying to lose weight, and he's putting up pictures of stakes. Yeah. We reckon he's losing weight doing that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Sure, Louis. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We we uh, believe that. Um, but yeah, the stuff you'd look forward to. You yeah. Know? Like, like you said, travelling. Um, I I really want to get into like the this the scene scene. You know, just building on that because I mean the one thing that you never stop doing is learning no, no. you're always learning something yeah? yeah now when I first started with the CNC machine I thought nah never going to happen all I'm going to do is turn a lot of good wood into firewood yeah but it's not the case you know I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a blast with it yeah. you know and I'm so much so that I'm I wouldn't mind retiring tomorrow yeah. if I could you know yeah. but anyway Chris there's a few people I'll mention uh, that we know of you know Personally, uh, DIY from Knuckleheads, uh, Shane Conlon, Uncle Knackers. How are you, mate? G'day, mate. Um, now, Shane, Shane can, he, he's, a, he's a builder. He is. Carpenter. He's, he can make projects, as you see on his channel. You know, he, he, he tries to emphasise a basic uh, tool principle. And, it, you know, like if, in, if when Shane retires one day, he's got the ability to be mobile. And if he wanted to do so, be able to construct things, you know, like he's made projects which are fantastic and he can go and visit someone and make them on site. Um, they, they say if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life. Exactly right. Good friend of ours who was on our show last year, um, Ryan from Oz Sawdust Makers, he, G'day, mate. He's, he's pursued uh, something I, th I think he probably helped him mentally uh, and he set up a business. He's turned, basically, he's turned his hobby into his, his, his job. He does. And like you said, he will never work a day in his life. No, no. Because he's enjoying what he's doing. That's so. right. And, and, and Chris, here are examples we're giving of, you know, what is to look forward to mm. if, you if you so desire it to be. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So the, um, so for you, yeah. where to from here now? We, we've been talking about this retirement thingy. Mm-hmm. I don't know how old you are. You look like you're 23, 24. Yeah. So yeah, you've got quite a few more years left. Yeah. I, what would you do? 
Uh, me personally, I, I aspire to pay the mortgage off. I probably haven't got that many more years. My partner and I are looking forward to um, just being based around where we are. We, we do a lot of commute, you know, where we spend time apart. And, you know, that's, that's not always healthy, but um, like we have a good relationship with it. But uh, come off the day where we own, have ownership um, is the day where, you know, it's, it, it might sound a bit cocky, but every dollar you make after that is uh, going towards that retirement. And we, we try to filter in the balance of looking forward to travel because we do like to travel yeah. and um, also uh, having a hobby or part-time work, you know, it depends. So a little while away, but I'm, I'm keen as mustard. And whilst I've had some time off with my operation, you know, I sort of got into that mould of going, oh, this is not too bad. You know? <laughs> you, you, I, I do try to get up at a reasonable time and not lack that, you know, discipline. But you do tend to get a, a touch lazy, but you enjoy different aspects of your hobby because, mm. um, you know, you, you're online looking at stuff a little bit more. Yeah, oh, for sure. I, I, I do that all the time. When I, because I'm actually, I'm working full time at the moment, so my time is limited. Yeah. Um, and I try and break it up so that it, um, that I'm not missing out on my, the aspects of it. You know, like I've got, I've got the CNC machine now, and I keep banging on about it, but I've got the CNC machine now. Yeah. Um, I'm learning new software uh, on how yeah. to use it. I'm learning new software on how to edit my videos because I, I keep trying, trying to step up my game every time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's that's some of the stuff that I've got to look forward to. You know, yeah. like when when I do finally retire, I can really just immerse myself into it all. At the moment, I have to go to work, which look, it's not a bad thing. I, I enjoy going to work. You've got mm. the interaction with you know your workmates there and everything, and you're making a good quid out of it. Yeah. But retirement's, I think, something that everyone looks forward to. You know, yeah. you, you, you want to stop going to work every day. Yeah. You know, that's. So, I mean, I know it is for me. And I'm sort of contradicting myself a little bit here, but you're not getting any younger. I'm not getting any younger, mm. you know, and I just want to enjoy my time, you know. So that's that's where I'm going now. I'm, I'm learning new stuff, yeah. getting ready for that, uh, that that retirement day. And that's funny. We did discuss another uh, topic, subject matter, for upcoming shows in the season. Uh, and it's one of them is, why did we go to school to learn all the rubbish that we didn't... Uh, need to put in use when we're in the workforce. You know, why, why wasn't our creativity captured when we were younger? The, the, best, <laughs> the best way I can explain it, if uh, you've all heard of Billy Connolly, um, the best line he ever came up with was, why did I spend my time learning algebra at school when I had no intention of ever going there? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. I know, I know, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I, I went to a, a high school uh, and they, they their big thing was they, they didn't sort of put a lot of time into um, the trades, you know, woodworking, metalworking, yeah. or anything yeah. like that. It's just they taught you one plus one was two, yeah. and then three out in the big bad world, yeah. you know. Yeah. I would have much preferred to go to a technical school so I could learn the skills that, that have taken me this long yeah. to get. Yeah. So. And it's a proven thing. Your education, if it's, if it's hit on the head that this... Child student is going to be less academic and more prone to create things with their hands. Put them in that, you know, teach them the arithmetic, reading, writing, and whatever they choose to uh, ad advance in as far focus as focus on what they want to do. I know kids uh, at this age they don't really know what they want, but. No. Surely you could look at a kid and go, you know what, this guy couldn't bang two bits of wood together, mm. he's probably going to be a politician. So yeah. let's move him into that, you know, yeah. area. Yeah. That's just what I feel about yeah. it. That's another topic for another day. Yeah. Um, so, what changes do you think, in general, are going to happen while we're doing this retirement gig? Oh, what changes? Mm. Uh, the <laughs> well, it's, it's the unknown, isn't it? I think, I think when you retire... Actually, let me let me ask you another question. Yeah, just quickly. Retirement does it does it scare you, or are you excited for it? Uh, it it's it, I'm excited for it, but it, it also emphasises that I'm at a particular age, and and whilst you can do that now, I suppose you're driven by your employment and whatever you, what's going on in your life. But you know, and, and at that time, I suppose you got to look at it differently. My grandfather had the thing of every five years. 
your life changes and you go on a little bit different distraction or a different path, but you ultimately stay you know, in tune with what you've been doing. Mm. Especially as you get older, you know, you find that the hobby is more important than going to a nightclub, oh. playing golf, whatever, you know. Golf. I, yeah, golf's good, but I you know like what I mean. Golf. I like golf. Yeah. I can't play it, but I like yeah. it. You can dance? <laughs> no. No, <All> right. <laughs> No, but they, look, that, that's the thing that, uh, that I think about. Um, because I'm so close to retirement now, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, does, it does scare me a little bit yeah. because, um, I mean, there's going to be an unknown. And the big thing is, and I, I'm pretty sure I speak for everybody, the big thing is that you're not going to be getting that finance uh, each week, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, 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 the regular pay packet each week. Yeah. And, and unfortunately... Just because you stop working, mm. the bills don't stop rolling in. No. And you don't stop eating and, you know, it's you're still going to have to pay for a lot of this stuff. Yeah. You know? And that scares me a little bit, you know, where am I going to get the money to do for this? But I've got a good superannuation policy. Uh, I know there's the uh, the pension that I can fall back on if I need it. Yeah. Um, but, but at the same time, I'm really excited. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, yeah. I really want to really just do this. Do this yeah. 24-7, yep. you know. Yep. Play with my new toys. Um, meet more people. Meet new people. Mm. You know, get around. I'd love to get up to Sydney, yep. you know, to, to do the, the woodworking shows. Or get up to uh, Queensland, yeah. you know, do the woodworking shows. Yep. I'd love to do all that. At the moment, I can't because of work yep. constraints. So the biggest thing I, I see, what we're talking about, what the outcome of our conversation is, keep making things. Yeah. Keep learning. Keep moving forward. It never ends. Yep. So keep moving forward, and then I'll I'll borrow another line from another movie. Yeah. Uh, from one of the Rocky movies, life life will beat you down if you let it, but it's not how hard you can hit; it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. Yeah. I think that's the that's the key to it. You yeah. know. So just keep going forward, keep doing what you love, um, and just just keep moving forward. Well, in the field of dreams, if you build it, they will come. Yes. So. Touching on a few movies this time yeah, around, are we? Yeah. Movies, yeah. Maybe we should do movie reviews. Maybe we should stop watching so much TV. Yeah. <laughs> so, yep, there we go. Good good little uh, chat about this today, Chris. I think so. I think we... Uh, I, I enjoyed this chat, this yeah. one. Yeah, it was a good one. Um, but we need to move on. We do. What are we doing next week? Oh, let's look into that. <laughs> All right, Dirk, so we, um, we spoke about what we're going to do when we retire. Yeah. And touched on a few few uh, points. Yes. I think we uh, noted that. But if you've got any concerns, any uh, questions, or you want to make a comment, down below. And also MC, um, what is it? M2C1 on Instagram. You can contact us there. Yes. And have a good day. Anyway, we're contactable anyway. That's right. Um, now, what's happening next week, Dirk, eh? I reckon, I reckon uh, if we dot our I's and cross our T's, we might have a special guest on. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I've dragged someone out of the cave and uh, I think I think it's a good contender for an all-round nice, genuine person to have a chat to. A good old yak. Yeah, all right. Let's go with that. Yeah. All right. And uh, good luck in the next week with your aeronautics. And... My aeronautics? Oh, yeah. Pursuit of... That's right. Dreams and things. The only, the only aeronautics is when I fall out of bed. Yeah, well, it's how you bounce back. <laughs> Not much these days. <laughs> uh, special thanks to Nathan from Hamaru once again. Yes. Par partner to Measure Twice, Cut Once. Uh, and anyone else out there prospectively want to be a partner to the show, uh, that'll be Ace and Bonzer and Grouse. All the cliches. Check out his website. I'll put a, a thing down here yep. to where his uh, website we can get in touch with him. Yep. Uh, I'm sure he'll be uh, happy to hear from you. And Chris, without, uh, you know, begging or pleading, if you enjoy what we do, please subscribe uh, to the YouTube channel. We, we appreciate it. Always comment. We'll get back. And audio podcast, we're there. We're on the Yap Yaps on iTunes. Yes. Yep. Pod monkey, whatever whatever your podcast uh, vehicle is. Yes, that's right. There, so. Look us up, and yep. uh, it might be a quality half hour. Hopefully, don't drive off the road if, you, if we say something silly. Yeah, um, 
Listen at home, might be safer. Yeah, don't, <laughs> don't listen to us laugh and crash into a tree because we could get into trouble for that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Could we? Could we get into trouble for that? I don't know. Depends what we told them that, that might lead to that. Yeah. It's a bit... It's going to be fun. It's a bit heinous and gross. When you get to the roundabout, turn left. <laughs> <laughs> Look, kids, Big Ben. Remember that roundabout? <laughs> Another movie. All right. So thank you very much for being part of this. And um, until the next time, which is next week, with our special guest, I'd like to sign off by just saying, keep making stuff, have fun, and hooroo. And I'll say, keep making stuff and have fun. And bye for now. We're rolling. <coughs> How do you spell intro? Uh, I've got I put the R after the end. Still not, I don't I speak of the work. language, mate. I can't work like this, dude. In row, in row. That's what in we row. do. All right. I should just get a bloody stopwatch, shouldn't I? I've got a stopwatch. Yeah. Using that one battery in my phone. You ready? Yeah, not yet. Yeah. So you want me to push the button and get going? Who the hell? Mark Dana. All right, so Dirk. Stop. Don't tell me what to do. <laughs>